Well, it's springtime and so much is happening in the garden. Well, did you know that the bats are coming back from their winter time in Mexico and California? I'm at the Backyard Bird Shop with Mitch and Mitch, I didn't realize that they migrate. I think that bats were here all the time. So what's about that? Yeah, so they're not here all year long. They're typically the 15 species of bats we have in the Pacific Northwest um, are here from April through September or October. And, and then the rest of the time they hibernate or migrate. Ah. So we have them here during the time that we would really want them here. And why do we want them here? You know, they are super beneficial, warm-blooded mammals, and so they're uh, very highly insectivorous, uh, mm. you know, insect-eating uh, mammals, and they can eat up anywhere from 500 to 1,000 flying insects <laughs> per hour um, each night. So they're really beneficial in terms of having a comfortable backyard, a comfortable you know, um, area uh, around your house. So we like to encourage them, and they're, they're not um, dangerous to you. There's a oh, lot of myths flying, really about that. flying around about bats, and one is that they, um, they uh, get in your hair. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Even short hair or long hair, it doesn't really matter. And also, they um, they don't carry rabies mm. any more than you know any other animal might. So just want to say up front that that's the case. They're really not dangerous in that regard. Yeah, so I know I usually notice some, I'm on my deck, it's getting to be twilight, and I can see them kind of fluttering. They look different than birds right about that time. They, they really do, yeah. They get active when it's almost dark, um, just, just beyond dusk a little bit, and then they're active throughout the night. And that's when they really do the their main feeding and so they feed where they can find food and so that is um, at, when there's lights or street lights um, they'll go there and if there's water sources where there's a creek or a river um, they will be you'll likely find uh, them there as well if you don't have a source of water in your yard and you want to attract them to your yard you could dig a hole and put a liner there and um, that would attract insects which would um, then attract some bats and again they're so beneficial if you want to have a comfortable uh, you know uh, place um, mm -hmm. when you're sitting outside on a nice summer right. evening this would be one way to do that right you don't have to put that spray on so i think that's the best exactly the best that's a nice benefit <laughs> save money right, right right and then what about all these houses maybe you can explain about how we can have them be more comfortable while they're here for the summer you're exactly right so obviously we live in a suburban or urban areas depending upon where you're at and so there are fewer places for those bats to um, roost during the, the during the daytime so bat houses as you can see behind mm -hmm. us we have a large variety of those right here um, and so that is really something you can do that will benefit this uh, these native creatures and um, give them a place to hang out and encourage their populations and like I said make you more comfortable as well do you want to show us some and show us how they go because it's not like they make a nest they no, just kind of hang you're exactly <laughs> right they do hang just like you can see some of these uh, nice pieces of rusted <laughs> art right here they hang upside down so unlike a bird house there's not a hole that a bat would enter from and you don't see a hole here at all mm -mm. but they really they would emerge through the bottom right here if you can get a shot of that they would go up through the bottom and they would hang in one of these chambers here. This particular one has uh, two chambers and the wood in there is intentionally rough so the bats can actually cling from there quite easily. So this is a nice small one um, that we offer. And we offer a real range of styles and prices just for people's budget and what their, what their needs are. And this is another one right here I think is very, very cool. It is cute. Um, looks quite rustic. It's mm -hmm. made out of recycled or repurposed wood right here. And again, very rough in the middle. This is really quite big, and this either one of these houses um, could house probably 20 to 30, 20 to 40 little brown bats, big brown bats, probably fewer, but that's a very nice one right there. Kind of heavy, actually. And this is the big one. So they don't mind being with their brothers and sisters and their cousins. They don't mind at all. And no, that's a, that is a really great question, Judy. They are social creatures, so they like to congregate in big numbers. So you want to give them space to do that. And so the bigger the house, oftentimes, the more you're going to get, and they're going to be more comfortable there. In this case, this is a bat condominium, and this has four chambers right here, and you can see that. Um, and again, the, the wood is rough in there, so that could house probably 60 to 70 little brown bats. Wow. And that is an awesome... Um, bat house right there and it's really easy to put these up in your in your uh, area in your house or an outbuilding or what have you so these should be um, ideally uh, hung at about 15 to 20 feet high and then also you want to make sure because bats are flying at night they have this echolocation system that they use to find their insects and where they're at um, you want to have a clearance about 15 or 20 feet in all directions oh, wow. from where they enter so they can actually make their way in there. So they just swoop in and they crawl up for the, for the daytime. Exactly right. And you want it to be southeast or south-facing because they are warm-blooded mammals mm. and they need to have that 
warmth to keep their body temperature at a safe level for them. So if you have that uh, south or southeast exposure to that height right there, it could be on a house, an outbuilding, or even a pole. And we've got one right here that's um, Maybe you can open this on one pole. for us so that we could see, because I think that it's nice to see the inside of what that's going to look like. This is a nice one. I really like this a lot. And some people, some people don't have a, a, an appropriate building or exposure, and this would be a way to put one up independently. And again, make sure you have that at the height of 15 or 20 feet to get the most likelihood that a bat will actually use it. Well, I'm sure there's a lot more information that we can't cover here, but it really is important to bring these creatures into your garden and really help with that bug population. So come out to Backyard Bird Shop and see Mitch and the staff here at all of their locations and you can get all that information. Mitch, thanks so much. It was really interesting. You're very welcome. I appreciate you coming out today. Thanks.